The, uh, it, I'm getting the impression, John, that you think that the major parties have lost touch with ordinary people. Uh, is that true? And how do you revive grassroots interest in political parties these days? Look, you know, we've had so much prosperity, OK, for, for multiple generations in this country and, and other similar countries, OK? We've become so, 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 so rich, so prosperous, OK, that we've sort of uh, lost basic principles about what got us to this place in the first place, like living within your means as a government, you know, and now we're just going, all this government debt, okay. So look, the, the minor party vote does keep growing. The major party vote does keep declining. I think that at some point there's gonna be, there's gonna be a total realignment on the right side of Australian politics. Now, I don't know what that's gonna look like. I hope, Fred, it's because the Liberal Democrats become a party of government, okay. But the, there's other good little parties out there that we like. There are definitely elements in the Liberal Party and the National Party that we like. Okay? But they are a minority and they are a declining minority. Okay? There is, during the whole COVID thing, you know, I, was, I was active in the Liberal Party for 30 years. The reason why I quit was midway through 2021 when we had the second big lockdown. And I thought to myself, the most disappointing thing about this is I knew Gladys and Scott Morris would go along with garbage like that because okay? they didn't believe in anything. But I was thinking, where is the conservative faction in the party room jumping up and down about this? There was basically nobody. And the few that did speak out got, you know, you know, hit over the head. So we had George Christensen bravely spoke up. Craig Kelly bravely spoke up. Matt Canavan was pretty good. OK, he stayed within the tent, but, you know, he was pretty good. But mate, they made it a bit tough for him. Uh, Antic was terrific. OK, and Jared Rennick was terrific. Well, Jared Rennick's facing a very difficult pre-selection in a few months' time because he's so outspoken. Now, this is, this is the most disappointing thing. There basically is no conservative faction left in the federal parliamentary party room. I'm not seeing much in the state parliamentary party room. So these are the guys who are meant to be believing in small government and they sat back under two years of COVID nonsense and they, they didn't say anything. So I thought, look, we need a fresh start. The Liberal Democrats are the party I like. Oh, good. OK. I want to just return to one specific aspect of policy. Uh, which is pertinent to, to uh, at state level. One of the most dramatic changes in Australia over the past few decades is that our schools have been transformed into indoctrination centres for environmentalism and colonial self-loathing. If this indoctrination doesn't end soon, John, I think it doesn't matter what debates we have in Parliament because the next generation will be lost anyway. Will the, Lib Dems, will the Lib Dems do anything to take the ideology out of education in New South Wales? The Liberal Democrats have got the most fantastic education policy and I really hope, once we've dealt with this COVID thing, I really hope to that to be one of the major things that we champion. No, we don't want to re-engineer the Department of Education and make it more conservative. We basically want to shut down the Department of Education. What we, what's happening in the United States right now is that there is this revolution happening. State governments are legislating in favour of a school voucher system. So at the beginning of every year, all the parents of school aged children get a voucher from the government. And that voucher might be worth, say, $7,000. And, and the parents can then decide which school they want to send their children to. And in exchange, the parents give the school the $7,000 voucher. It basically makes all schools a private school. Now then the parents, who love their kids more than anybody, obviously, are going to decide what school is suitable for my little kid. Now maybe they want to go to a traditional big, big school like, like we have out there at the moment, but there'll be other, other parents who say, look, I think my kid's got a really good knack for business or music or sport or the arts, okay? You can have religious-based schools, you can have home schools, you can have very small schools, very big schools, you can have micro schools. Now if the parents don't like what the school's teaching them, the parents can go to another school. So it'll bring in that, the, the, the magic of the invisible free hand of, of free enterprise will come in here and re-engineer our education department. So we don't want to, this is the difference where the, the libertarians are from other right-wing parties. Other right-wing parties want to say, oh look, you know, we want to get into power so we can do right-wing things, okay? And left-wing parties say, oh, we want to get into power so we can do left-wing things. No, no, the Liberal Democrats just want to make the whole government a lot, lot smaller so less damage can be done. And step number one is a voucher system for the education.